All right, I know why you're here. You want more power out of your e-bike. How did he know? Now, I've definitely been in those shoes, so today I'm gonna tell you a little story. The story of my quest to get more and more power out of my e-bikes, starting with very ordinary e-bikes and modifying them to be extremely powerful e-bikes. So if you're on a similar journey, this might show you a couple of the upgrades you can do to get more power out of your bike. And fair warning, things can get complicated kind of quickly and also very expensive very quickly. But my journey starts here with this bike, which is a 2018 Rad Rover. This was my first e-bike and when I got it, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. I'd never been on an e-bike before. It was amazing. But I got used to the power really quick. This thing peaked at like 750 watts. I think the controller was maybe 18 amps. It was pretty small. So it was a very limited amount of power and I wanted more power. And the easiest way to get more power is with a bigger controller, higher amps on the controller. And I found one. Area 13 e-bikes made a rad power upgrade kit. They give you a 35 amp controller, a new display screen. It's plug and play. You just plug it into your rad power bike and boom, you got tons more power. And it was like 220 ish dollars for that kit. And man, was it worth it. It was a great power upgrade. Now for the catch. The catch is it's going to avoid any warranty you got. And also, they don't really make these plug and play aftermarket controller kits for very many bikes at all. They make them for the Rad Power Bike, and I believe there's one out there floating around for the Hemiway bikes at electrobikeworld.com. Not affiliated with either company, but if you luck out and have a Rad or a Hemiway, you can buy an aftermarket controller upgrade kit and get some more power very cheap. It's a great bang for your buck. Now, if you don't have one of those two brands of bikes, your chance of finding an aftermarket plug and play controller upgrade are really not good. So let's cover some of the more modifications I did to boost the power in this bike. The next step of my journey was to put on higher voltage batteries. This is a 48 volt bike and I put 52 volt batteries on it. So I, I'm over volting the system and the, I got a little bit of a power increase out of it. And it was a little bit of power increase, not a whole lot. The bang for the buck just wasn't there. 52 volt battery cost me I think five, 600 bucks at the time. They're probably even more now. And the, the gain from it was very minimal. So not the biggest bang for your buck. The controller, increased amps in the controller was way, way, way better. But it did give me a little bit of boost in power. Now for the drawbacks of upgrading the battery pack like that, you're gonna avoid the warranty obviously because you're over volting the system. And the second thing is, you're probably gonna have to get into cutting and splicing and soldering up some of your own battery connections. So you have to decide if you wanna go that route. With the battery and the controller now upgraded, the bike had doubled in power. It was so much more fun, but I still wanted more. And that's where the next huge power boost came in. The next thing I did to this bike was the addition of the front motor, a geared hub motor, 750 watt geared hub motor in the front wheel. I had to piece together parts from all over the internet and cobble this thing together, but man, did it make a difference. Holy cow, basically doubled the power again. Cause you had, I was running the same system on the front as I had in the back. I went to area 13. I bought another controller upgrade and another display, another wiring harness, a motor, and we put it all on the front and doubled the power again on this bike. And it was a killer for the longest time. This was the most powerful bike in my garage. It would destroy any challenger, any store-bought e-bike. This thing would take it out. And the videos of me upgrading this thing really got a lot of interest. I had a lot of people asking me how I did the front motor. Can they get the parts list? I was sending out the parts list, parts weren't available. And that is when I decided, okay, folks have interest in this. And I created citizenperformance.com and now sell a front motor kit, a plug and play 750 watt geared hub motor already laced in a wheel with the display screen and the battery and the controller and wiring harness and everything you need to do basically this, put another motor onto the front of your bike. And it makes a world of difference. You're gonna get a ton more acceleration off the line and the power to crush pretty much any hill you want. But remember when I said things get expensive? It definitely gets expensive really fast. My front motor kit is almost $1,000 and it's a very strong motor. So you gotta make sure your forks can handle the torque from the motor. Most of the time you gotta buy a new set of forks too. So now you're looking at $1,100 to put a front motor on your bike. But adding the front motor to this bike was easily the biggest power boost this thing got throughout the whole build. It was quite expensive, but it was definitely the most dramatic power increase. And this citizen cycle bike, as I like to call it, was king in the garage for the longest time. No one could take it out. But my journey continued. I still wanted more power. So I took what I learned from making this bike and I made this one. This is pretty much the same concept. I had found the recipe that worked for me. Higher amp controllers, higher voltage batteries, motor in the front, big power. The difference here is I started with a bike that was way stronger from the beginning. This is a wired cruiser bike. This thing has 60 volt batteries, 45 amp controller, and a 1500 watt motor. Goes like 40 miles an hour in its stock form. So way stronger bike to start with. 
I grafted on my Citizen Performance Front Motor Kit. Boom, this thing is an absolute monster. And once you get to this point, you uh, there's not really much else you can do. You can do little things that I didn't mention, like you can shunt mod the controller. If you have a KT controller, typically you can open those up, solder two little wires together, and you get a little bit of power increase, but hey, it's free, right? It voids your warranty, but it's a free and it gives you a little bit of power. But this is kind of getting to the point of how much more power do you really need out of the bike? This thing is a peak of like 3,300 in the back and probably 2,000 in the front. And it has crazy acceleration off the line and hill climb power. It goes like 40 miles an hour with ease. But this build also came with a much higher price tag as well because the cruiser bike sells for 2,000 bucks. You got to pay 200 in shipping, front motor kit and forks. You're looking at another 1,100 bucks. So you're in this one about $3,300. And at that point, you got to decide, do you want to build something like this or do you just want to go buy it? because this bike exists. Now this is the Wired Predator, and it's basically the store-bought version of that custom-built green bike I just showed you. Dual motor bike from factory. So you got a 1,000 watt motor in the front, 1,500 watt in the back, 50 amp controller in the back, 40 amp in the front, dual 60 volt batteries. This thing is insane. It's a peak of about 6,000 watts. That's eight horsepower in a bicycle. It's absolutely crazy. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he stayed with it. He stayed in it. And when you get to this point, you're basically, again, at the top of the food chain, hence the name Predator. There's not really anywhere to go from here. So this is kind of where my quest or my journey for power has come to an end up until this point, because there's really, I don't know how I'm going to build anything stronger than this thing. With this big, huge power comes a big, huge price tag. This thing is $34.95, I believe, plus you gotta pay shipping. So you're probably gonna spend about 3,700 bucks to get this bike to your door. However, this is the baddest bike I've ever been on right now. Just gobs and gobs of power. It's a little bit hard to get the power down to the ground. The green bike, the custom built one, can hang with this bike off the line. But once you hit about 35 miles an hour, this thing just pulls away. There's just so much power in this. Top speed about 44, 45 miles an hour. That green bike, maybe 41 and a half, 42 ish. And this bike is pretty much the pinnacle of power that I've been on up to this point. If you know something stronger and it's in bicycle form like this, not electric motorcycle, if it looks like a bicycle and it's stronger or more powerful than this, I wanna know about it. Drop it in the comment section. And by this time, my little story has probably either inspired you to go out and build something crazy awesome, or I've just completely terrified you about how much money you can spend chasing more and more power. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and that's all I got today. Catch you in the next one.